We continue now at the top of Daf Ein Gimel of an Aleph from Masecha Shabbos. This is Shabbos Daf 73a. The Gemara here is in the middle of analyzing a Brisa, and the Brisa is relevant to Machlokas between Abai and Rava. Abai and Rava argue about, let's say, a person on Shabbos is intending on cutting Tolush, and instead he cuts something which is Mechubur. So according to Abai, since he was intending on cutting so therefore he's chayiv, even though his intention was to cut talish, which is not a malacha, but the fact is he was he had kavana to be mechatech, and he ended up cutting mechubar lakarka, so he's chayiv uh, for the malach of kotzer. Rav says, no, in that case, since his intention was to do something that wasn't an av malacha, therefore he's not chayiv. So now the Gemara is in the middle of bringing a proof from a b'raisa. The b'raisa says that Shabbos is different than Shar Mitzvahs, and Shar Mitzvahs are different than Shabbos. Shabbos is different than Shar Mitzvahs because on Shabbos you can be chayiv for each and every av malacha that you do. And uh, Shar Mitzvahs are stricter, they're different than Shabbos because Shar Mitzvahs is chayiv when it's Shagag below Miskavin. And the Gemara in the last Umbud was discussing all the possibilities of what all this means, and now the Gemara finally concludes as follows. Elolav Reisha Ba'akum. Obviously, the first statement of the Brisa, which is not going to be so relevant to us, is talking about Avodah Zarah. Meaning, as the Gemara said before, when a person does multiple Av Malachas, they're Chayav in every Av Malacha. This is not true. When a person uh, serves Avodah Zarah, does different kinds of worshiping, the Avodah Zarah is only Chayav one. The Seifa Bishar Mitzvahs, and in the Seifa, we're talking about other Mitzvahs, not Avodah Zarah. What does the Brisa mean when it uses the expression? When it uses the expression "shagag below miskavin," it means the sover the shuman who a person has in front of him a piece of food. He thinks it's shuman, which is kosher fat. Va'achlo and he eats it, and it turns out that it ends up being that he ate chaylev. So in such a case, he's chayev. Masha'en came b'Shabbos, and that's not true on Shabbos. The potter, where the the similar scenario, you would be potter. Then eskavin lachdo chesatolish v'chata chesamachuber potter. Exactly what Rav said that if a person had kavana to cut something that was detached from the ground, and instead he accidentally uh, cut something which was attached to the ground, he would in fact be potter. It's different than shar mitzvahs. Why are both of these cases similar? Because in both these cases, in the first case, he's intending on eating something which happens to be kosher. He ends up eating something which is not kosher. And in the second case, in the Shabbos case, again, he's intending on cutting something, doing that malacha, but to something where it's okay, something that's tallish. He ends up cutting something that's mechubar. And that's exactly what the Bryce is saying, and that's Rav's proof. So how does Abaye explain that part of the Bryce? How does Abaye explain this line in the Bryce, which, which talked about shagag below miskavin? It's not that he thought it was food. He thought it was just like spit. As Rashi explains, he wasn't even intending on eating. That's not called eating because it's not food. Uvalo, he ended up swallowing it, and it turned out that it was chaylev. Masha'in came b'Shavis. Now the similar case, the contrast case in Shavis would be the potter that he'd be potter in eskavin lahagbia as a talish. If, for example, he had kavanah to lift up the talish, not even to do an action of cutting the chotach as a mechuber, and then he accidentally cut something which was mechuber lakarka potter, he'd be potter in that case. That is uh, that is a good example of a counter example of the case of Rok. In the case of Rok, he was not intending on eating at all, and he ends up eating chaylev there. You're chayev. And in, on the other hand, on Shabbos, he'd be potter if he was intending on lifting and, end, and then ended up cutting Mechubar Lakarka. Avon Neskav in Lachtoch has Atolosh, but Abaya says that if, if, like, if the case that we were arguing about, uh, a case where a person intended on cutting something that was Tolosh, the Chodach has a Mechubar, and instead he cut a Mechubar, in fact, Chayev, you would be Chayev, not like Rav says potter. Abaya says, no, you would be Chayev, and that is not the case that is being dealt with in this price. The Gemara now continues with the two dots uh, with some similar machloks in between Abai and Rav. Itmar was uh, learned as follows, Neskavin Lizrok Shtayim Vizorak Arba, let's say a person had Kavana to throw something two Amos, and he ended up throwing it four Amos. Rav Amar Potter, Rav again here says Potter, Abai Amar Chayev, and Abai says Chayev. Rav Amar Potter, Rav says Potter, Deloka Mechavin Lizrika Da Arba, because he had no intention of throwing it four, and only throwing it four is considered a Malacha. He had no uh, intention for a Malacha. Abai Amar Chayev, and Abai says, Chayev, Dalka Mechav, and Lezrika Bialma, because he had intention to throw it, and therefore, if he ended up throwing it four instead of two, he is in fact Chayev. Kesav or Rishus Hayachid, Benim says Rishus Rab, what if a person is throwing, and he thinks he thro- he's throwing it into Rishus Hayachid, but really it's Rishus Rabim, so he's, he's Chayev now for transferring it from Rishus Hayachid to Rishus Rabim. Rava Amar Pater, Rava again says Pater, cause again, we'll see in the Gemara, but his Kavana was to do something that was Mutter. The Abai Amar, or that was Pater, the Abai Amar Chayev. And Abai says in this case as well, you're Chayev. Rava Amar Pater, Daha Lo Mechavin Lazrika Disura. Rava says he's Pater because again, he did not have intention to do a Zurika, which was Aser. 
The Abaya Machayev, Doka Machayev, and the Zrika Bialm. And again, Abaya says Chayev because he was Machayevin to throw it. He did indeed throw it, and he threw it in a way which was prohibited, and therefore he's Chayev. And so now the Gemara says with Sricha, and we need it, we need all three cases. We need the Machlokas Abaya and Rav in the case where the person is cutting the Machubar Lakarka. We need the case where he's throwing it four instead of two. And we need the case where he's throwing it into Rosh Hashanah when he thought it was Rosh Hashanah. Why? If we only had the first case, in that case where he's cutting the mechubar lakarka, he wasn't even intending on cutting mechubar. He wasn't intending on doing an iser at all. But if a person had intention to throw two amas and he threw four amas, the arba below tarti lo miserably, you can't throw something four amas without also throwing it two amas. It's all included. So therefore, aim a moda leila abay. Maybe he'd admit to abay that yechayev. And if we only had that case, the case where he throws four amas, where he's intending on throwing two, so in that case, Rava says, Pater, because he wasn't even intending on throwing it four amas, maybe throwing it two amas is not considered throwing it at all. But if he believes he's throwing it to Rosh and it turns out he's throwing it to Rosh Hashanah, the Mechavin Lizrika the Arba, where he's having intention to throw it four amos, meaning he's having intention to throw a significant kind of Zrika, Ema Modi Leila Abai. Again, I would say maybe he admits to Abai that at least in that case, Rechayev, Tzricha, so we need all three cases, and in fact, Rava says Potter in all three cases. The Gemara now continues to Nan. We learned in our Mishnah, this is the upcoming Mishnah, Avos Malachas, Arboim Chasar Achas. It says that there are 39 Avos Malachas. Vavinan Ba, and the Gemara asks, Minyon Alamali, what's the point of giving the number 39? We could just count. Vyom Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan said, Shema son Kulam, Behelam Echad, that if a person did all 39 Malachas in one Helam, in one Shogeg, Chayev al Kalachas Vachas. He's Chayev on every single one of the Malachas. So now the Gemara, again, they have to come up with a way. How are you doing all 39 Malachas in one Shogeg, but you realize it's Shabbos? If you're Shogeg, in all 39 malachas, in what way did you did you realize it was Shabbos? So Bishlam al this works out according to Abaya, the Amar Kiyai Gav who says you can be Chayv in a case where, let's say, you intended to cut something which was tallish, you cut something that was Mechubar, or you intended, let's say, to do it two Amas, and then you ended up throwing four Amas in these various cases. Mashka'ach so you can have a case, the Yoda di Sura Shabbos, he knew about Shabbos, the Yoda la Isra Malachas, and he knew about the concept of Isra Malacha, the Kata Bishiurin, but he made a mistake and this idea of shiurin. So he was thinking to throw a certain amount, he threw another amount, and Abai says chayv in that case. That's a situation, and just to have a similar case for every single kind of malacha, that's a situation where a person can know about Shabbos, and he was shogig in some other way, in shiurin, let's say. So he was shogig in shiurin, and then you have a case where you're chayv. Uh, 39 different karbonas. El Lerav Adamar Pater, but according to Rav, who says that in these kind of cases of Shiurin, you're Pater because your intention was to do something that essentially was Pater, and therefore you're not Chayiv if you end up doing it in the way that's Chayiv. So, Heichim Ashkachas Law, how are we going to have a case where, again, you all 39 Malachas are Beshogeg, but you knew it's Shabbos? So the Gemara says, well, it could be Bezad and Shabbos for Shigas Malachas. So you knew it was Shabbos, but you were Shogeg in the Malachas, okay? But still, so the Gemara says, how does that work? This all works out according to Rabbi Yochanan, who said earlier that if a person, let's say, didn't realize your chai of kares, he was shogag of kares, but he did realize these things were usher, so then mashkachas lo diyod shavis belav. Now we have a very simple solution. He knew about all 39 malachas because he knew they were all usher, but he didn't know they were chai of kares. Therefore, since he was shogag bekares, he's now chai of 39 karbonas, it's considered a shogag. But if we hold like Rav Shimon Lakish, the Yomar at Sheyishgag Belav Vikaris, who says that in order to bring a carbon, you need to have not known about the lav as well as not knowing about the karis, meaning you have to have not known this isr at all. So the yod alol the shavis b'mai. So if a person didn't know the yisur, the yisurim of the thirty nine malachas at all, and he did not realize, uh, well, if he if he didn't know about the thirty nine malachas at all, in what way did he realize it's shavis? How do you have a case of zod and shavis and shigas malachas? So the gemara explains the yod alol b'tzchum and v'alib d'rabbi kiva. Again, this is the same answer the gemara gave earlier. You could say that he knew about shavis because he knew about the isr tzchum, and we'll have to follow Rabbi Akiva's opinion that tzchum and ardo raisa. So that's something that's min Torah aser. So therefore, he knew a shavis. Shabbos, and he knew in what way did he know it was Shabbos, because you're not allowed to carry outside the Tchum, and that's an answer the rise according to Rabbi Kiva. He did not know about any of the 39 Malachas, and therefore he's Chayev on every single one of the 39 Malachas. That's how you'll have to understand according to this position. 
The Gemara now continues with the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Avos Malachas are boim chaser achas. There are 39 Avos Malachas on Shabbos. Hazoreyev, somebody plants, Vachoresh, somebody plows, Vachotz are harvesting, Vahamam, when you gather that which was harvested into piles, Vahadosh is threshing, Vahazore, Zora is winnowing, Habora, somebody does separation, you're separating the bad parts of the wheat from the good parts, Hatochen, he grinds, Vahamarakid, he uses a sifter again to separate the good from the bad, Vahalosh, and then kneading, uh, when the person is kneading the dough, Vahofen, baking, Hagozes is Hatzemer, somebody who shears the wool, uh, off of a sheep on Shabbos or off of an animal where he's using the wool. Hamalabno, he whitens it. Vahamanafso, and he combs it out. Vatsovo, and he dyes the wool. Vatov, and spins the wool. Vahamesach, mesach is somebody who's setting up the warp threads. When a person would weave, they would have a loom, and you'd have a bunch of threads called the warp. And then you would put this other thread that was the weft, you would put it in between uh, every other thread of the warp. That's how you would weave. So you'd go up over one thread and then down below the other one. So mesach is when you're setting up those threads. The ha'osa shtei bateinir, and again, that's setting up these two, taking the two strings and putting it into the actual loom. The ha'orek shnei you weave two threads. The ha'potzea shnei chutin, you break apart two threads. Sometimes there's a little bit extra thread that you need to remove. Ha'kosher, somebody ties. The ha'matir, and somebody unties. The ha'tofer shtei tfira, somebody who stitches two stitches on Shabbos, sews two stitches. Hakorei almanas lifter, somebody who tears and condition to to sew shtei tfira, two two uh, stitches. Hatzod tzvi, somebody who traps a deer. Hashochto he shechtzit v'amavshito, he strips the hide. Hamolcho he salts it. V'hama abed es oro, and then he tans the uh, tans the hide. Turns it into leather. Vahamachko, he smooths it out. He takes off the hairs. Vahamachatcho, he cuts it into the proper shape. Hakosef shteosios, one who, one who writes two letters. Vahamochik almanas lichtov shteosios, somebody who erases in order to write two letters. Habona, someone who builds. Vahasos, or someone who destroys. Hamachab, someone puts out a fire. Vahamaver, someone lights a fire. Hamakab, a patish, somebody who strikes with the hammer. That means essentially the finishing touch on a product. Hamotsi merishus lorishus, and somebody who transfers from one rishus to another rishus. Hare elu avos malachas arbaim. These are the 39 of us Malachas. Rashi here explains, just to see a few of the Rashis. Ha'ofa, for example, baking. Lo have a mishkan. They didn't bake in the mishkan. The lo shayecha of a pas. Baking is only by bread. U pas lo shayecha be malachas a mishkan. They didn't bake bread in when they were constructing the mishkan. Avol kulu kamaisa havoi b'samimonim shel tseva tchelas v'argaman v'tolaz shoni. All of these things really were the process of cooking the dyes, which were for the tchelas and the argaman. That's what they're doing. Uva gemara parach the shavik tanim v'ashal da'av v'samimonim v'nak it over. The gemara is going to ask this. Why not say mevashal, which is cooking? Why are you saying baking? And, uh, of course, the Gemara is going to say, we're giving you a way to remember the Sidur at the Pas, the way that, uh, the way that uh, bread is made. It's an easy way to remember those beginning Malachas. Rashi says, Agoze Semer, a person shears wool. Vichol Shar Malachas Shaychi B'Tsemer Shamalachas HaMishkan. All the rest of these Malachas are Shaych by the wool. Uh, Rashi here explains them continuing. Rashi says, "Vahani kulu mi mesach va'elach, going from mesach and onward, ar kosher matter until tying and untying shaychi biyarios. That's by the curtains, essentially by the weaving of the curtains, the various malachas that are relevant to that. And uh, so these essentially are the thirty-nine malachas. And the Gemara will discuss many of these thirty-nine malachas in depth as we continue in the next video on Daf Ein Gimel Amid Base.